In this video, we're going to talk about vector projections. And I think before we talk about what the way that we find a vector projection, we need to first draw a picture of what it is so we get an idea of what we're actually trying to do here. So let's consider that we have two vectors. Let's say we have a, a vector B and a vector A. And if we're looking for the projection of B onto A, and the terminology for that is as follows. It's the projection of B, and then we put a little subscript vector A down here. The way this reads is this is the projection of vector B onto vector A. And the picture of what that is, is we drop down a line perpendicular to vector A from vector B, and it's this vector here in red. That is the projection of B onto A. And likewise, we could also do the same thing over here with these two vectors. We could think of this vector right here in red as the projection of B onto A, if this is vector B and this is vector A. All right, so that's what we're looking for. Um, now, usually when one first starts to talk about vector projection, we talk about the component projection first, which is a scalar. And all the component is, is that we basically, we take this vector B, we know any vector has two components, right? Most of the time we think of them as an X and a Y component. But in this case, we want to think about it as the component of vector B in the direction of vector A or along vector A. And so if we consider these two vectors, B and A, to have an angle theta in between them. Since the projection of B onto A is the side, notice that this is there's a little right triangle here. Since this is the side of the right, the right triangle that is adjacent to the angle theta, we know that that component or that side of the right triangle is the hypotenuse which is the magnitude of, a, of vector B times the cosine because it's the adjacent side times the cosine of theta which is the angle between them. Now one thing we need to remember here is how we define the dot product. Remember that one way we can find dot product is we take the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times the cosine of the angle in between them. And you'll notice we almost have that. The only thing that's missing is the magnitude A. So another way we can define this is by taking A dot B and dividing out the magnitude of angle A. And that's what we see most of the time. And just you might want to make a note that again this is a scalar because the result of a dot product is a scalar, and we're just dividing it by a magnitude, which is another scalar. A scalar divided by a scalar is a scalar. Now we're at the place where we can talk about a vector projection. The only difference between the component of B along A and the projection of B along A is that this should be a vector. So now we want to give direction to this scalar quantity. Now what direction do we want this scalar quantity to have? Well, we want it to be a vector that points in the same direction as what? As vector A. Now, we have to be careful here, though, because if we just multiply by vector A, yeah, it will have the right direction, but it will change the length. So what we want to do is remember, the length can only be as long as this component of vector B along A. So how, what kind of vector can we multiply a vector or a quantity by without changing its length. 
typically you're thinking to yourself a unit vector, specifically a unit vector in the direction of A. So to find the projection, all we do, we simply take the component of B along A, which we just found in the box above, and we multiply it by a unit vector in the direction of A. So it's A divided by the magnitude of A. And we could clean this up a little bit so we can take vector A dotted with vector B divided by the magnitude of A squared times the vector A. That's it. Um, let's go ahead and do an example here real quick. We could find the projection of B onto A. So, if you use the box that we just talked about, first thing you want to do is find A dot B. A dot B is going to be what? It's going to be 2 times 1, which is 2 plus 1 times 0 is 0 plus negative 2 times negative 1 is equal to positive 2 over the magnitude of A. Well, what's the magnitude of A? The magnitude of A is the square root of 1 plus 0 plus 4 or square root 5. But our formula says not just the magnitude of A, the magnitude of A squared. So instead of square root 5, we have 5. And then times vector A, which is the vector 1, 0, negative 2. Simplifying this, this is 4 fifths times a vector 1, 0, negative 2. Or we could also rewrite this as four-fifths, zero, negative eight-fifths. All right, and that is vector projections. Thank you. I will say, um, go ahead and try to do this next example on your own. If you do want to try to do it on your own, you should get that the, the answer is four-thirds, two-thirds, negative two-thirds. Go ahead and try that one. Thank you.